as right. The first applicant is Truncheons and Bludgeon. Phil is really excited about weaponry. The second is Jardware's Hardware. I guess if your name is Jardware and your options for rhyming business is pretty limited. The last applicant is Rodkin's Fine Jewelry. A jewelry store could really class up Old Plunkett Street. Jewelry! Sounds faint. Okay, I'll get him moved in and get the next storefront ready for applicants. Hey, okay, Charles. You can go back out, right? Set Flimberg's tiny workbench up on your desk. Time to get the tiny go time to get the tiny work. You find a hook on one of the ceiling beams and hang up your new refrigerator. Cool. You place the glowy orb thing on your knickknack shelf. Excellent. You can leave, right? Yeah. Damn it! <laughs> oh wait. Yeah, you sure you want to go back out there? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Alright. Uh, you got other side quests. Is, I mean, is this the last? Do you want to be the last? Chapter? I don't know. If you want to move on, you can move on, but you got four other side quests. I have to go find houses. We can go. Wait, check, check the camp. Let's see. We, I haven't found any fences yet. They're probably in town, in Ocean City. Uh, Rails, we have four, so a couple of them. Which some of them might just be in Captain. I Captain Star. Also, wants that fuck key curses. Okay, we're gonna do this now. Yes. Curse. All right. Curse here's, key. Here's, here's the curse for you, Toxin. The key jumps up to the roof of the dome and sticks there, picking and keening. That's the sound keys make. Against the metal, the lights in the store whine, flicker, and then cut out completely. Dang it. Wait out. Only when the power is out does the key calm down, give up the most odious part of itself to the machine, and drop back down onto your lap. Light returns to the store. Fixed it! We got a spare light bulb under the cat. You got an item. Uncursed key. The key's curse lingers in the machine. It is, itself, an arcane lock to be solved only by a projection of consciousness. We got! Oh, hello. Oh, my fancy man. I have assembled everyone just as you asked. Oh, Detective. no. The victim's wife and the two men who were present in the passenger car at the time. I confess the truth of this murder continues to elude me, but no doubt you are soon to enlighten us with your great powers of deduction and observation. Uh, by, by, may I inspect the body again? No, that wouldn't be fair to the other passengers who haven't had a look yet. But I will tell you again what I know. At 11.13am, the professor dropped dead in his chair after sitting down with his wife after for a cup of tea. At that time, Mrs... Ryukenshi. Ryukenshi, yeah. And Mr. Andretti were the only passengers present in this car. Mr. Perry returned later. The rest I leave to you to deduce, Detective. Interrogate. Yeah. Hmm. Niccolo Andretti, business. Okay. You may Ryuk Ryukenshi, the victim's wife. Bart Perry, a youth. Yeah, the train coroner. Train coroner? Hi, right, businessman, interrogate. Businessman Andretti adjusts his cufflinks. I told you, I'd never even heard of this man. I know of Burgerworth College, of course. It's an excellent institution, but I didn't know he was a professor there. Now, come on, let's not delay our journey further. I'm traveling with 19 suitcases of exotic rubber to make new and exciting wheels at the factory. Detect. You observe closely to see what you can do. Exotic rubber, eh? No doubt from the jungles of Almodovar, whose local brand of nicotine I smell in his collar. Of course, the rubber plants of Al Almodovar don't just yield material for bouncy tires, but an odorless poison, lethal with drunken hot tea. But why would this man abet the murder of a stranger? I suspect the answer lies in the resume on the table and the name printed on it. Martin Perry. There the wife! The widow, Ryu Kenshi, dabs her eyes with a handkerchief embroidered with the words, Morning Rags and Wipes. <laughs> Moments privacy, please, Detective. I had nothing to do with my husband's death. No reason to want him gone. He was a kind man, and not a rich one. Everything he made, he spent on the roulette tables. He owed... He owned over 700 of them. <laughs> it's the largest collection in the world. We were traveling to Yorba Linda so the mayor could give my husband the key to the city. But that won't happen now. You deduce that you should make some observations. Sometimes the simplest answer is the correct one. She says she had no reason to wish her husband dead, but the chemical stain in her cuticles and the fingerprints on the window above, which she opened to dispose of the murder weapon, tell the tale more truly. But the nose reveals even more. Observe the zigzag pattern of the medical cleft below the nostrils. It's called Purdy's Piltrum. 
and it's a rare genetic condition she, ser she shares with Martin Perry. Fun. The young man is absent-mindedly, but metho methodically, dissembling, disassembling, and reassembling a fountain pen. Oh, I know that. I've done that before. It's as I said. Yes, the man was a professor of mine at Burgerworth College, and yes, he gave me a C and a D. But there's, that's no reason to kill a man. You agree? Besides, at the time of his death, I was in the lavatory, trying to figure out what all the bits and pieces do. Perfect alibi, wouldn't you agree? Deductive ob observations bring about your mind. He's right. A mere C and D are no reason to kill one's professor. But is that the whole story? Observe how the boy tinkers with the fountain pen train and the train lavatory. He fancies himself a mechanic. He wouldn't get put in the door of that profession if his C and D stood for car dunce. Nobody would be able to hire him. Unless the professor who awarded those ignominious ignom grades died. In that event, every grade he ever gave would be voided. Is that? I'm not sure that's true. young man could take a plum job in car manufacture and start earning the big bucks. I'm not sure that's true. Alright, well, uh, okay. Discuss. Expound. Yes, detective. I have solved this murder. It was never in doubt, detective. Now tell us. Tell us all. What happened here? The victim was poisoned by... A giant, a giant dog. dog. Uh, probably Mark Perry, son of his wife, but not by him. Hold, Mark Perry. Hold on now. That's claptrap. Everybody, that's claptrap. Oh, here. Victim was poisoned by what the fuck was that stupid shit called? Oh, there it is. That poison from the. Uh, Alma Devar rubber tree. Out of greed, jealousy, lust, revenge, sick curiosity, shut him up, expect something or something, to void his car down's grace so he can make make ties for Mr. Adretti. That's mm -hmm. all now. Probably that. <laughs> no. No, no. Christina. I give that an F for fish brain. Careful now, don't be a fool. You were gifted with great powers. Great powers of deduction and observation. Now come on, use them. I swear to God, giant dog. Med. I swear to God, giant dog. <laughs> don't, 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 don't let it be so. You basically, you basically got it right. You just got the wrong person. Ah! Oh, it's the wife. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oops, wrong guy. <laughs> I've solved this murder. Poison. Poison by Yumi. Bitch. This shit. For that, for that thing. <coughs> Young Martin Perry dreams of working on me. Oh, okay. I guess that is technically you. <coughs> the victim was poisoned by you. We were in for the exact poison of Al Devar, Robert, Boy Martin, Perry, Dunn, Grace, make tires from his ready. Young Martin Perry dreams of working on cars, and his fresh ideas excite Mr. Andre, who runs the tire factory. But Master Perry's professor was effectively black, has effectively blacklisted him as a car dunce, unemployable. What to do? Kill the professor, of course, and avoid the odious grade. Here, the plot becomes most wrecked. Master Perry's mother broke into Mary's professor and his present on this very same train that Master Perry and Mr. Andretti flies an undetected by Mr. Rio Kenji. It's voila! No more professor or card dunce. And there's one thing our conspiracy not count on. Me. 
I'll pause, I'll pause for applause. I'm not ashamed. Any parent, sir, would do the same. As would any manager seeking new talent with interesting ideas about tires. If you call someone a car dunk, you're branding them for life, and you're responsible for anything that happens next. How awful! The three of them, and together! What? My first thought was like, they all, the all three of them were in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Tell you yeah, what. I, I kind of wish it was a dog. Anyway, continue. Tell you what, detective. At the next stop, they can all get out and take the bus. Sick business. Quite so. But a wonderful feeling, I think, to be possessed of these gifts. Great gifts. Great powers of deduction and observation. And to use them. Here's another. A gift, that is. Call it a reward. Nice ring, isn't it? Look what rewards accrue to the powerful. Look how the world itself reveals itself at your touch. Okay. Right. Wait. Wait, but the curse. Curse. The curse remains unsolved. Curse remains unsolved. God damn it! Okay, that was the logical problem. All right, let's see here. God damn it! Okay, I knew it! Alright, you want it to be the dog? <laughs> yes! Expound! Alright, well how was how did he die? How did how how do you how did he die? He was smushed? If you want. <laughs> oh no. Okay, alright, hold up a second. Alright, he was shot <laughs> by giant dog with Mortar and pistol. Out of lust. What? What are you doing, detective? You've already solved the case. You were given great power and used it. Don't you remember? Don't you remember the ring? You're being foolish now. No. How? I should tell it again. He was clobbered by you <laughs> with your. Oversized mallet out of stick curiosity. You're a fool, a fool. <laughs> I gave you great powers of deduction and observation. <laughs> I gave you the power to bend back the skin of the world and sniff up its insides. How dare you waste it? You really want to live without this power? You really want to live in the dark? I love the you misunderstand. I live for the void. <laughs> You're a fool. And I wouldn't sully that ring on the finger of a fool. Give it back now. You don't deserve it. I uncurse. <laughs> <laughs> so, did that curse effectively try to bribe you into not destroying it? That's a little disconcerting. You look at the key that once harbored a shadowy magic. It shimmers in the light. Upgrade. Check your fingers and pockets. No mysterious owl ring. You are reminded of the great figures of history who wielded, wielded incredible power and chose to give it up. Can't think of anyone specifically, but the concept is interesting to consider. Who's someone famous who gave up great power? He's not famous, but my dad never eats more than he needs to at a buffet. I don't remember what, where I read this, but there's a rumor that Anne Boy well, Bel Beline had access to a tank, but chose not to use it. No need, she said. And you know who else had a tank? Walt Whitman. All right. Ooh, that's all right. I don't need it, but that's all right. Yeah. Alright. Alright, time to... Time to... I'll do the next chapter. I want to... To the dream! This fridge is fully what stocked with terrible fuck? Gator Man beverages. Grab one. Alright. Gator Man Cola. Why do you have infinite of that now? Oh, it's a potion. Uh, let's see. The only reason this isn't the worst beverage you can imagine is that you can imagine the same beverage except for... <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Ooh, consider the over. Gate. Yeah, he, pa he pondered the orb. Yeah. What does that do? Oh. Oh. What a mysticality. Oh shit! Up, 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 up. Bad. 
wagon. Danny, the success, success of your swamp derived mission performances has not gone gone in noticed. The boss is duly impressed by it. The boss? Huh. Wow! Sweet! Hell yeah! Get rich! Oh, check my hat. Done! Okay, no mess. Alright, I'm hit the hay. Swamped with exhaustion. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, excuse me. It's turning green. What Safe and say? warm. Uh, safe. Today is October twentieth, nineteen oh two. Oh. My diary. This diary is property of Margaret. <laughs> Page nine. All others got to keep out under penalty of law. Dear diary, yesterday our dog Daisy died. Papa said it was bound to happen because she's older, which isn't old for a kid, but it's really old. For you. He really, he said we we're getting two dogs soon. I was sad anyway. Some birthday. At school today, the teacher asked did what we want to be when we grew up. I said, oh God, because then I can make sure all the dogs live a long time and are always happy. Everyone laughed and that Jerk Billy Gribsley said, Girl, girl, a girl can't be God. My bitch. So I said, <laughs> I'll be president instead because that, that's nearly as good. He said, a girl can't be president either. Well, I'll show him. I'll show it. Sorry. Well, I'll show him. I'm going to make all kinds of laws about being nice to dogs. I'll make a Make being a jerk illegal too, so Billy Griffey goes to jail. They can't eat nothing but bread and water. So there. Oh no, she's starting to become angry. Your desk, covered in Ocean City paperwork. Hey, your hat's uh, doing that thing that I want. <laughs> Poindexter, your insufferable bean counter. <sighs> what is it? Madam Comptroller, I merely need your signature on these budget revisions. With this, the remainder of funds currently allocated to municipal services will be redirected to your shadow presidential campaign and your other projects. That sounds a bit obvious. Rest assured, I am only sparing you the details, but you have made quite clear to me that you find intolerably boring. The transactions will be meticulously obscured through shell corporations, cutouts, offshore off accounts, and the like. Alright, good. Better not or off. Certainly not, Madam Comptroller. Fine. It's time to record the announcement of the candidacy for Shadow President. Alright. <laughs> Attention, peons! Oh, jeez, don't call them peons. Peons, ma'am. And, uh, please try for less totalitarian tone, generally. Right, right. So, uh, something like... My fellow citizens! Howdy, folks! What's cooking, my pals? Hey, I'm, I'm gonna use that one now. Hey, hey, Jay, what's cooking, pal? Nothing at the moment. All right. There is no, there is, there is no sustenance being produced. Don't go robot on me. Don't go literal, literal alien on me. I'll need that. Wow, no, much too casual. Nobody would buy it. What? What's more casual than that? No, too casual. Oh. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta put more fake personality in it, into it, you know? You gotta be more formal. Don't reduce yourself to your base instinct. Okay? I know it's hard, but put humanity in your words. Remember that. Committed to memory. <laughs> God damn it! I won't put work on that. Look. Let's see. What's cooking, my pals? I already did it. <laughs> I, hate, I hate saying it anyway. How about. Hey, folks! Too folksy, ma'am. This isn't Arkansas. Okay, my fellow sin. I, Margaret. That's weird. The levels went all funny when you said your last name. Don't worry about it. Hereby announce my candidate for shadow president. Vote for me or else. Uh, nope. Sorry, ma'am. No. Uh. Not by explaining who you are. Most of them probably don't pay much attention to local politics. Alright. In my role as Ocean City's Comptroller, 
I have made I have made it my mission to <laughs> make sure you all get deck what you deserve. Rob, suck blind for my own various ends. Uh, it's my mission to make sure you all get exactly what you deserve. Um, what? Well, look, I get it. Double talk is fun, but it makes you sound kind of sinister. You'd be better off just lying. That's fair. Eliminate <laughs> Rob, you suckers blind! Find the fairy sins! Ma'am, are you funding with me? Yeah, it feels good to tell the truth once in a while. Won't get you elected, though. Yeah, I suppose not. Alright. Eliminate waste and graft in the city. Died. <laughs> Like we both were like, what the fuck? It changed. <laughs> it went all keyboard on me. What the hell? <laughs> oh, there we go. Eliminate waste in the city's finances, and I am proud that I have successfully. Through, I think that's supposed to be thorough. Uh, oh, successful. No. Sorry, complete. <laughs> successful through my program, cutting down needlessly waste. Specific program, thereby preserving your valuable taxpayer pay. Things actually matter. You don't have the time or energy to protest my actions, forcing you to live in desperate squalor like the rats you are! <sighs> Look, bam! Bam! Contain the evil for five minutes! Calm down! Yeah. Things like family, prosperity, and freedom, bomb, baseball, and apple pie. Ultimate power. Ah, baseball and apple pie. That's pretty good. But if it isn't cliche yet, it will be soon. It's before it's cliche. <sighs> yeah, all that shit. Perfectly meaningless. Love it. Okay, <laughs> then just a call to action to top it all off, and we're done. A vote for me is a vote for you. Vote for me, and I'll pay you a hundred feet. Vote for me, or I'll fucking kill you. Ha ha ha, Come on. Oh, I'll just dash to which yeah, fair enough. <laughs> oh, that's great. Just perfect. Good, is that all? Yeah, we'll add all the legal this message, blah blah blah, campaign. Got a president and stuff to post. Great, I'm out of here. Ugh, time travel my guts. This guy is a yokel even by the standards of his time. Kind of recent Mayor Bird Yes, yeah. hmm? yeah, so are you? I'm here to speak to you. Uh, about the Crystal Valley Dam project, I want you to make the dam bigger, much bigger, and much more powerful. Here are some provisions. A dam this large would flood the valley and displace hundreds of people. And besides, the dam as planned will provide a perfectly adequate amount of power. Why would we need to make it bigger? How about a handshake? What? I don't even know who you are. You want me to agree to this on the basis of a handshake? Specifically, I'm offering you the handshake hand with the with the handle of this. Large briefcase filled with meat. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Oh no. Yes. Yes, I think this new plan is quite viable. Good. This desk was carved from a single block of tedium, the raw elemental form of boring work. Hey, what the? Cheap in your office. What the hell? It turns out that a lot of the president's time is spent on ceremonial bullcrap that nobody actually cares about. Case in point, pardoning the Thanksgiving turkey. None of your aides know what a turkey looks like, apparently. Bat. Hard the damn thing. Hello, me. Hey. Your desk, covered in policy documents, both benevolent and, benevolent and benign. There's a note here about going back in time and making the Crystal Dream damn bigger. Gotta get on that eventually. Hello, me. Your ridiculous court wizard isn't taking the situation seriously. Make it clear to her what you fired. Give me a progress report to the SIT. I can take care of the problem. Oh, it's so dreary and unfestive there. All that math and science. It isn't holly or jolly. Screw your damn beam! Your entire job is dealing with magic. Today. I won't have that dude building intern or messing around in the library. It's too much at stake! Get it dealt with. Oh, I'm giving giving criminal federal holiday status to the freaking okay, ground. <gasps> you wouldn't. Go! Get him! Yes. Six lockers. Some dumb jock kid you have to give a presidential fitness award to. Hey kid, how's it going? Uh, hi? Bro, yeah. 
All right, by the power invested in me as the Shadow President, he is more for being able to climb a rope faster than most other kids, which is definitely important, and this is a great time. Uh, thanks. Do I give a speech? Whatever. Hello. This miserable beast. President Strong, like rich. Yes, I know, and yes, you don't have to remind me of the current part of the agreement. Yes, warriors mean. Warriors hungry. Good fighters. That's you're my face. Stick If I need sorry, this you're my ace my hold this thing on the fight. So you better stay on top of things and make them make if you won't your make rich. God don't anything up down there, I will turn wallets. Nope, I get. Good. Whoa, what's going on with your face? Can I have these hats? God damn it! Why does everyone else get one? Desk. Yeah. Duty calls again. Oh, oh, okay. This useless oh, okay, that's it. Hey, I'm looking more evil nowadays. What's going what you, on with what that? You, what are you talking about? Oh, okay. More damn paperwork. How come nobody told being present with all paperwork and talking to idiots. Sorry, ma'am, but the unwashed masses gotta be kept in line while we amass power. Yeah, yeah. I hereby sign this order declaring July 12th National Bread Circuit Day. All citizens get a complimentary dinner roll and turn on the nearest full track. Uh, ma'am, I ain't sure that. Who cares? Like, but what's, what's he even for? Anyway, this is all but. Okay, but now my hair is starting to move independently of my form. That's no good. Hey, what's up? Hellstrom. What does he want? What the fuck? How many people do I have to kill? <laughs> is this a boss? Is this the the boss's introduction to people I'm gonna have to stab? All right, Hellstrom. Let's hear your report. Everything's fine, a dandy ma'am. I don't rightly understand what this shadow energy stuff is is exactly. Or why you want so god gold darn much of it. But the converters are spraying it out slicker and greased mice out of a gallon gun. With plenty of slag left over to press into those weird monsters you like. Finally, good. So you meet the project head, right? Yep. Though we'll need to expand the oil drilling operations some more. Need you to sign this permit so we can expand into lots 210 to 240. Sure, what? Wait. In Is that a problem? Bam. Ah, well, ma'am, if you're wanting your weird black juice, we gotta get the regular black juice out of the ground first. Alright, fine. These streams get more sinister. I like it. Oh, man, that was weird. Anyway. Up to that, just dancing, just dance. Oh wait, all my shit. That. Yep, get your buffs. Let's see that. Get my orb. Yes, good. Go to the. Hmm. Like that. Ah, oh, I can't make. It. Good. Go to the statue. Oh. Tend to fight it. I forgot that gave me uh, back. That too. Probably a. Oh, man. Okay. I mean, whatever. Yeah, it's fine. Tentacle. Hit you, little tentacle, bud. Hell yeah. All right. We got a sickle from a signal. Wait. We got a signal from a sickle. You know, farming tool thing. It's over in Gray County somewhere. Mostly nothing but farms there, but there's a store that's been open since forever. The owner's name is Jasper. He knows Murray. He'll probably help you out. Here's a map. Not Gray County place map. This is, and this, just is tech. this is a diner placemat. It literally has a map of the county right in the middle of it. Oh, I'll, I'm just impressed that you found a way to give an actual map while still also a thing that isn't a map. I have, okay, let's go. Oh, got this. Is it, is it the mob? Oh, um, who else could it be? Hell yeah! Uh, hey, this is Benny One Tongue speaking. What happened to Don Top, top Room? Sore throat. You, Danny? That's me. 
Okay, here's the deal. We left a bunch of stuff in your nightstand. There's some books we need cooked, some documents we need forged, some evidence we need doctored. Once you're done with all that, dump them in the sewer grate outside the antique store, and the boys will handle it from there. Yeah, I, I stalked you, Benny. I'm bad. Sure thing. Damn. <laughs> In one tongue. Yeah, a bunch of stuff in there. Got uncooked. Uncooked mob books, unforged mob documents, and undoctored mob evidence. Why is that one bleeding? Don't worry about it. It's bleeding ink! It is. <laughs> he fell attention immediately! 